Hi there guys, well welcome back. We are, we've just worked on 3P. Uh, well done on your efforts with that exercise. We're now working towards 3Q and being able to access, access that exercise. Okay, so this is all about setting up um, a general formula for solving two simultaneous equations. And those simultaneous equations are going to be in the form of AX plus BY equals E and CX plus DY equals F. So that's your sort of normal setup for doing an elimination method for solving a set of simultaneous equations, which we've been doing for years. OK. Um, now, beyond that, there's a little talk of matrices, and I think I might add a little bit on matrices later, because this kind of links to the ideas of solving simultaneous equations and sets of um, simultaneous equations through, um, through matrices. Um, and then we just get to apply the formulas that we find in example 40. OK, so let's have a look at example 40 then. So let's just get rid of me. And here we go. This is the copy of the question. So let's find the general formula for this set here um, for a unique solution, by the way, as well. OK, so first of all, let's do a normal technique of elimination. Um, and usually with elimination, we would think to get rid of the middle term first. So what we're going to do is say we have 1 and 2. We're just going to times 1 by um, D, throughout by D, so we're going to get a D here. And we're going to times the second one by B. Okay, so times 1 by D and times the second one by B. So we're going to get A, D, X plus B. D y equals E D, and then when we turn to the second one by B, we'll get C B X plus B D Y supposed to be a Y equals F B. Okay, now we can subtract these two lines, of course, and we're going to get A D minus C B lots of X. Just factorize that as well. And that's equal to E D minus F B. And of course, then we're going to get our X is equal to E D minus F B and A D minus C B as well. OK, now, if we have a look at the way in which the book has done this, um, just a little something to note here that when they've done the subtraction of their two lines after multiplying the top line by D and the second line by B, They've got implies and implies. Now, those middle implies that you see on that line where it says implies, so that implication arrow implies ADX minus BCX implies ED minus FB. Those should be equal signs. Now, again, in newer copies of the book, that will be sorted out. But um, it's just a note on the working out here. That's not correct. So it should be equals to, just as the same line underneath should say equals to as well. The implication signs on the arrows on the left-hand side are fine, just the ones in the middle should be equals. Okay, now again, the way in which the book takes this forward next is it says, well, look, if this is x, let's substitute that into, say, the first equation, and let's rearrange that to get an expression for y. The problem with that is that that creates a lot of working out, a lot of um, algebraic fractions here in order to get down to several lines later on y is equal to this other expression. Now from my point of view it's actually quicker just then to say well hang on let's just eliminate our x in this case and so we can again times the first line by something and the second line by something. So the first line we'd want to times by c and the second line we want to times by the coefficient of x in the first line which is which is a. So when we do 1 times by C, we're going to get ACX, and you can get ACX underneath as well, plus BCY equals EC or CE. And then we're going to get ADY here and FA or AF. OK, and now, excuse me. Now, if we do a subtraction of these two lines, we can see that we're going to get B, C minus A, D, lots of Y. So I've just taken those two terms, taken the A, D, Y off, B, C, Y, and factorized. And then we've got E, C minus F, A. 
or maybe better if I say C B minus A F. Let's keep the keep things in alphabetical order. Okay, now y is going to be equal to C E minus A F divided by B C minus A D. And let's just check that one. Uh, a D minus B C they've got at the end. Oh, okay. So just to be consistent with the way in which they're writing it, okay. So we had, uh, yeah, they had the same for this, but then to be consistent with the way in which they're writing it, they've just swapped the two terms around. They've got A F minus C E over A D minus B C. Obviously, exactly the same thing. Perhaps they just think it's nicer to start with A, or maybe that's just the way it came about from their different. Um, working out that the different lines working out. Okay, so our solution set here is x is equal to this and y is equal to this. Now, if we want to, we can put that as x in here and y in here as a coordinate point as well. Okay, so these are our general solutions to um, to this set of simultaneous equations. Now, just to note that you can't have solutions when AD is equal to BC. Now this one should equal to BC as well, which means I've made a mistake somewhere. And my mistake is here. There we go. So this is CB here. So in fact, this is CB here as well, or BC. Okay. The, the denominators in both the cases were the same. Okay. So there are no solutions when you're dividing by zero, essentially. So that pretty much guarantees us unique solutions. However, it could be the case that we're getting out um, that we're getting out zero uh, x is equal to zero here. So we should just be careful of the fact that if a d um, minus c b is equal to e d minus f b is equal to zero. So in that unlikely event that this is zero and this is zero here as well, then we get a situation where we can't, so that's equal to zero, we get a situation where we have infinitely many solutions. So we'd still get zero equals to zero, which is good, but it doesn't tell us what x is. Now that should be sufficient to check to see that we don't have infinitely many solutions as well. Now, I think the book doesn't mention that, but the book absolutely does mention this one this one too. So just watch out, there could be infinitely many uh, solutions to this, um, not just unique solutions. Um, under this kind of rare condition here, that you're getting a zero is equal to zero. You could do it the same with this as well. Um, and that, that would be uh, analogous. That would be, this, that would be the same situation essentially. Likewise, if C, B minus A, D, equal to C, E minus A, F, you'd get infinitely many solutions. You'd have zero Y equals to zero. Okay, so this, you know, this cannot be equal to zero. Okay, and these two here as well cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so those are your general set of solutions. And yeah, they say in example 40, you could have eliminated first X instead of Y. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, matrices I'll talk a little bit about at the end. And now we're going to do example 41. OK, so for example 41, it says use the formula from example 40 to solve these simultaneous equations. Now, let's just write it down again. We've got AX plus BY equals to E. And we've got CX plus DY here is equal to F, is equal to our F. And now we're doing, uh, we, our solution set rather, is going to be equal to E, D minus FB. Sorry, that's the other way. Let's write D, E. That minus B F over A D minus B C. And there we go, sorry. My over 
AD minus BC, and then the other solution is going to be AF minus EC or CD um, over AD minus BC. Okay, so what we need to do now is substitute in our coefficients. Now let's have a little look at what we've got. So we've got a certain amount of X plus a certain amount of Y equals a certain number. Okay, it's a, we're complex numbers, but that's fine. Um, and likewise, in this case as well, we also have a certain amount of X plus a certain amount of Y is equal to um, a number on the other side as well. So a number which doesn't involve X and Y. So the format is good. Okay, we've got AX plus EY equals to E, no problem. Okay, so now we just need to say what each of these things are. So we've got A is equal to 3. We've got B is equal to 2i. We have C is equal to 1 minus i. D is equal to minus 1. E is equal to 5 plus 7i. And F is equal to i. Okay. So now substituting these things into here, we'll see that we get the same denominator, by the way. So maybe I'll just do the denominator aside. Now this thing is called our determinant when we're working with matrices. So um, let's work this one out. We've got A times by D. So we've got minus, minus 3. And BC, so that's this times this, is going to give us 2i. And then you've got 2 times by minus 1, which is giving us our minus 2, but then plus 1 because it's i times i, so it's plus 2 there. And then, of course, that's minusing from here as well. So take it in quite a lot of steps. Yeah, just checking this one here. Um, uh, I can see that I've got an answer here of minus 12 plus i. And in this version of the book, we can see, here we go, that we have minus 12 minus i. But that doesn't make sense. And that fourth line of working out they've got, where n's in minus 12 minus i, they've actually got 3i plus 5i in the previous expression, which is 8i. And then take away 7i gives us plus i. So that's a little mistake there in the original version of the book. I'm sure it's ironed out now. OK, and now, as I said, you're not going to leave answers like that. We don't um, we, we don't leave complex numbers with uh, as rational numbers with complex number on the top of the fraction and on the bottom of the fraction. We um, we we make the denominator a real number to write it as a single complex number. And we do that through this process of multiplying the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. OK, and you can see they've done that. I've run out of space a little bit, so I'll let you check that one through yourself. OK, now I did say I was going to talk a little bit at the end as well about matrices. Um, and I noticed they talked about this in the book, too. And so up here they say, you know, here's uh, a way of dealing with things with matrices. And I mentioned the fact that this determinant was um, a, D minus B, C, uh, and that's what we were getting for our denominator in both of our cases as well. Okay, and that's a really important little function when we're dealing with matrices. Now, I'm not going to do a lot on matrices here, but I'm just going to set up matrices just to show you how it works. So if I was going to set up my simultaneous equations here, and if I was going to do uh, set up a matrix here, uh, something like this, and we've got x, y, and that would equal to our answers 12 and 19. I've made this one up myself. And so this is really saying 2 times x plus 3 times y. Okay, so 2x plus 3y is what you're getting out here when you're doing a multiplication of matrices. You do this times this plus this times this. Okay, and that's first answer and then when you then the next line is going to be 3 times x and 5 times y so it's this times by this and you always need with matrices the same number of columns in the first matrix when we're multiplying as the number of rows in the second matrix so that we can do this thing so the 2 has something to match up with and the 5 has something to match up with 
Okay, so in this one we get 3x plus 5y equals 12, 19. Now we've reduced this down to a vector. It's a vector because we don't have um, four terms anymore. Uh, we have just one expression and another expression here. So we've just got something over something, which is our vector. Now we can say that both this is equal to this. So we've got the equations 2x plus 3y equals to 12, and we've got 3x plus 5y equals to 19. Okay, well, what they're talking about with the determinant turns out to turn up in the inverse function. So there are inverse functions to matrices. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail with this now, but if you want, you can type in a matrix into your calculator. And if you do this, you will notice that the determinant is the divisor in each of these cases, unless they've simplified down, um, unless somehow they've they've simplified that down or taken it out as a factor. Okay, but you should end up with the determinant, which was um, a d minus b c, should turn up when you're finding the inverse function for this thing here. Now, the inverse function in matrices, what you'll put in front of this, okay. So you're going to do your inverse function there. So this times by this is going to bring you back to x, y. And then you'll need to do that here as well. So you also need to put your inverse function in here as well. OK, um, and essentially what we've done there by finding a general method is exactly um, the same as the way in which they approach it with matrices as well in order to come up with inverse functions too. Now, I'm not going to take that any further. There's no matrices in our, our course, in fact, but it is kind of interesting. It does turn up in the other HL course, um, applications and interpretations. So the HL AI course in IB. OK, well, I was just checking out online here. It's just checking. Uh, this dummies website and uh, here we can see that it's actually giving us our inverse matrix so if you do want to try setting up our your inverse matrix in the case below and just trying to do a multiplication to try and undo um, the two three 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 five matrix which I just came up with then you need to follow this process here so you need to put in one over a d minus b c and then you put inside your matrix D and then minus B and then minus C and A. That's your inverse matrix, um, and that you can then apply to 1219. To be honest, you probably need to check through some YouTube videos for that, and uh, you don't really need to do that for the course. So I'll leave this one here. Okay, then, guys, well, thank you very much, and let's just have a look at where we're going next. So after 3Q, there's only two questions there. And then it says there's systems of three linear equations with three unknowns. OK, so we're then shifting on to three dimensions, not just the two dimensions. OK, well, thanks for listening in and next time.